Hello students, this is Rahima again and welcome to the last video of reproduction in animals where we are going to solely focus on the modes of asexual reproduction. Okay, so let, uh, let's start without further ado and for that I'm going to share my screen with you people. So the topics that we are going to discuss include budding, binary fission, multiple fission, spore formation, cloning, fragmentation, and lastly, we are going to finish with regeneration, okay? So the first is uh, process is of budding. Budding is the process where a tiny little outgrowth develops on the parent's body. This outgrowth then grows uh, more and more and finally it uh, gets uh, it buds off that means it gets uh, cuts off from the parent's body and develop into a new individual independently okay here budding in yeast is shown yeast is a unicellular fungus okay so you can see this is the parent's ye parent yeast cell <laughs> This is the parent yeast cell. It is forming a bud, which is here. Okay. Now the cytoplasm starts dividing. Bud is uh, with a nucleus. Okay. And then it has uh, separated as a separate cell. Okay. And more and more yeast cells are formed when there is a chain of bud that forms over uh, the cell that first budded off. Okay, this is how the yeast cell grows. Okay, uh, and uh, in the next picture, you can see budding is shown in Hydra. Okay, in the Hydra also, you can see a tiny little outgrowth in the form of bud. This bud also, it grows just like the parents. Uh, uh, just like the parent, okay, it finally grows off so that it can get cut off and develop into a completely new individual. So whenever you are asked what is a bud, you can simply answer that is just an outgrowth on the parent's body, okay. <clears throat> Let's move on to the next process that is of binary fission. Binary fission is a simple process where one cell divides into two, okay. Here, binary fission, I'm going to write the definition also. Binary fission is the process of one cell dividing into two daughter cells okay uh, here the binary fission is shown in case of a bacteria where the bacteria nucleoid elongates first of all and after the nucleoid divides, uh, divides the cell wall and the membrane they begin to form a transverse septum which is here this transverse septum, it covers the whole length of the cell and finally the cell divides into two daughter cells. Okay, we will look at the binary fission, the three types of binary fission in uh, other unicellular organisms which are protists. Okay, first is longitudinal binary fission where the plane of division is longitudinal along the length of an animal. Okay, second is transverse binary fission uh, where the length of the division is along the horizontal plane, okay, which is this. And in irregular binary fission, there is no plane of division, okay, which occurs in. Can you identify the animals? The first animal is Euglena. The second one is Paramecium 
and third one is amoeba okay the division is same one cell is dividing into two cells but the division plane is different the plane of division is different okay so this you have to remember you glena longitudinal binary fission paramecium transverse binary fission uh, amoeba irregular binary fission okay then there is another type of fission which is multiple fission here one cell divides into multiple daughter cells okay which is very common in malarial parasite which is plasmodium okay this is how it is able to uh, spread the infection in human body okay you can see the nucleus dividing into two then uh, which further divides into four nucleus and it keeps on dividing and the cell it releases a cell bursts and it releases the multiple daughter cells in case of plasmodium these multiple daughter cells are known as merozoites merozoites are uh, responsible for uh, spreading the infection okay let's move on to spore formation <clears throat> spore formation is common in fungi uh, like bread mold examples of bread mold is rhizopus muca etc okay and uh, penicillium is also an example aspergillus is an another example where the uh, reproduction will be the same okay that means by spore formation but the types of spores will be different okay but our concern is the formation of spores how reproduction is taking place with the help of spores okay so in this picture you can see the fruiting body inside which the spores develop is known as sporangium which are born on erect hyphae known as sporangiophores okay this is just a structure of uh, a hyphae okay a mass of hyphae is known as mycelium so this is a mycelium okay i'll just write also the thread like structure is known as hyphae okay and mass of hyphae <clears throat> is known as mycelium okay so this is a mass of hyphae and this is just one hyphae okay rhizoids are the root like structures which actually absorb the uh, nutrients from below okay which you can see in this picture also in this picture also it is very uh, visible the spores are tiny little fruiting bodies okay uh, which contain the nucleus which uh, develops into uh, which contain all the genetic information which develops into a new individual okay these when the sporangium bursts open uh, these spores they can travel to longer distances with the help of wind air and that is why within a small period of time the fungi is capable of uh, spreading very fast okay and if the condition are uh, conducive like if there is a, a right amount of humidity right amount of temperature heat warmth and everything then it the fungi will spread faster okay all this is because of spores okay spores don't forget spores are the fruiting bodies tiny fruiting bodies and they are capable of undergoing dormancy also that is the stage of resting uh, they rest uh, if unfavorable conditions are there and when the favorable conditions return they break dormancy and start developing into new adults okay so let's move on to the next process that is cloning cloning is the process where 
identical uh, individuals are produced okay so it is the process of producing identical organisms okay in this particular picture i am going to explain i am going to explain how dolly the sheep was produced okay so a black sheep black face sheep was taken as a donor for the egg uh, and the nucleus of the egg was removed okay and a white face sheep was taken uh, for uh, donating a somatic cell any vegetative cell from its body and its uh, nucleus was intact okay and these two cells they were fused with the help of electricity okay so this was an egg fused with the cell remember that the cell containing the nucleus is of the white shape white face sheep the nucleus is of the white face sheep this was induced to form an embryo and this embryo was implanted into another black face sheep uh, which acted as a surrogate mother and a black face sheep with white face lamb that was a clone of the white face sheep was produced okay so the clone of which sheep is produced here the white faced sheep is produced here because the nucleus of the white face sheep was used for the production of the embryo okay uh, the donor of the egg and the surrogate mother in this case both are black face sheep but still the uh, lamb that was produced it was the white faced lamb okay because the nucleus was of the white faced sheep this is how the cloning process is done and this is how dolly the sheep was produced okay i'm going to show you a short video on the process of cloning i hope you enjoy it so let's start okay so we are going to uh, begin the recording in a moment okay you spot the two so clones let's when we talk about clones let's start the video spot the two clones when we talk about clones in science, we mean organisms that are identical copies. They have the same DNA as each other. Identical twins are examples of naturally occurring clones. Both plants and animals can be cloned. Let's start with plants. A gardener, farmer or plant breeder might want to make many copies of a particular plant quickly. The easiest and cheapest way to do this is to take cuttings. Shoots are cut from the parent plant, then the end of each shoot is dipped in hormone rooting powder and placed into a pot of soil. The hormone rooting powder will encourage the cutting to start growing roots, and soon a whole new plant will have grown, which is identical to the original plant. The method works because the shoots of the plant contain stem cells, which are able to differentiate to form different cells and tissues. You can find out more about this process by watching this video. However, you might want to produce hundreds of plants from only a small piece of plant tissue. To do this, another method called tissue culture also known as micropropagation, is used. Here are a few cells taken from the parent plant and placed onto a nutrient jelly using antiseptic technique. This means making sure no microorganisms contaminate the jelly. The cells will start to differentiate and form new plants. Animals can also be cloned, but different techniques need to be used. In animals, only embryo stem cells have the capability to differentiate all the different types of cells found in an adult. There are two methods you can use. The first is called embryo cloning. A farmer might have a cow that gives a lot of milk and wants to use her to create many calves. The cow is artificially inseminated using the sperm of a boar. The embryos grow until they form a ball of embryonic stem cells. 
Before they become specialized, the embryos are removed from the uterus, divided up into separate embryos, which will all have the same DNA, and then each is placed into the womb of a different cow. These cows are surrogate cows. They are just being used to grow the embryos until they are born. The calves will be clones of each other, but not a clone of the mother due to the bull's sperm. Hopefully, the calves will have the characteristics that the farmer desires, but as sexual reproduction is involved and the genes from both parents are randomly mixed, there is always the chance that they won't. There is a way to get around that problem, and that is to use another technique called adult cell cloning. This is used to form a clone of an adult animal. You might have heard of Dolly the sheep. She was the first mammal to be cloned back in 1996. There are several steps to this process. An unfertilized egg cell is taken from an adult female, and the nucleus is removed. A body cell, such as a skin cell, is taken from a different adult. The nucleus is removed from this adult body cell and is inserted into the egg cell. An electric shock stimulates the egg cell to divide to form an embryo. These embryo cells contain the same genetic information as the adult body cell. When the embryo has developed into a ball of cells, it is inserted into the womb of an adult female surrogate to continue its development. So three different adults are used. The baby born will be a clone of the adult that donated the body cell because it has the same DNA. This technology is very controversial and raises many ethical issues. One worry is that it could be used to clone humans. Questions raised by this might be, how many embryos would be destroyed in order to successfully clone a person and would the clone have the same human rights as others? So in this video, we have looked at what a clone is and the different methods used to clone plants and animals. This was a very informative video and it explained cloning not only with respect to the animals but also... Can you spot the two clones? Sorry. When... <laughs> with respect to the plants. Okay. Cloning is a very good method. Uh, with respect to plants because it will increase the production of uh, higher yielding uh, varieties of crops. But for animals, it raises many ethical issues. Uh, we can get into it later. But let's continue with the next process. That is fragmentation. Uh, fragmentation uh, only takes place in filamentous forms like uh, algae. And one such algae is, green algae is spirogyra. Okay, a spirogyra has filaments like these and a septum develops, tiny little septum can develop in the filament of the spirogyra which divides it into two and this process is known as fragmentation. These fragments then, then can uh, develop into new individuals. Okay, very simple process it is, but you have to remember that it is very common only in the filamentous forms. Okay, let's move on to the next process, which is quite interesting. Uh, some people, they think that regeneration can also be regarded as fragmentation. Okay, it can be regarded as fragmentation. There is nothing wrong in saying that regeneration where the body uh, gets fragmented it, uh, and each part of the body can divide and develop into a new individual. Okay, but uh, this process that is regeneration. Okay, here we are talking about animals who get accidentally uh, divided their body gets divided into two parts and then after that what will the animal die no the animal will not die okay each part of the body because this is an accident okay so each part of the body is capable of dividing into an adult and this process is known as regeneration okay uh, here I have given a couple of examples like first one is of a flat warm planaria. If accidentally the body of the planaria divides into two, each part can is capable of developing into an adult. A similar thing can happen with the body of hydra also and a starfish, but only the arm of the starfish is capable of regenerating, not any other part of the body. Okay. So suppose the central disc of the, the starfish is uh, removed and then this arm will be capable of developing into an adult. 
this will be a difficult process okay so a starfish also they are capable of regenerating there are some starfishes that can regenerate also uh, their arms also can regenerate which uh, is specifically is shown in this diagram okay so regeneration is more like you can say it is a process of survival right this is how the animals they can survive if uh, there is an attack by a predator or the conditions are harsh high tide or you know storms or anything like that okay so regeneration is also common in lizards here they can basically regenerate their regenerate and regrow their tail uh, so they have certain cells inside their uh, tail which can regrow and regenerate okay uh, in human beings also there is an organ which is capable of regeneration and that organ is liver so this is a new information i think for you guys uh, livers that means they are the you know uh, the easiest organ uh, that can be found if organ donation is required okay so regeneration also is done with this we are going to start with the questions okay in the first question you have to identify the processes given in the following figures okay so the first figure is of multiple fission right if you are probably thinking multiple fission then you are correct i am writing the examples also in the bracket this occurs in plasmodium and this is regeneration and regeneration occurs in starfish okay let's move on the eggs of frogs do not have shell for protection yet they are safe in water how yes that is true eggs of frogs do not have shells okay they the eggs have jelly like substance covering them okay and this jelly like substance uh, it keeps them moist and prevents them from desiccation prevents them from drying up if the same eggs if the frogs lays eggs on land they will get dried up and die okay this is how they are safe in water okay the egg nucleus is not exposed to the water just like that it is still has a covering which is jelly like okay which protects them the next question is about twinning how twinning occurs during sexual reproduction okay twinning is the formation of twins okay so there are two types of twins there are identical twins okay and there are also non identical twins okay so let's look at the picture to understand the identical and the non identical twins in the identical twins the fertilization occurs and the zygote develops and this zygote remember i told you that zygote continuously undergoes division it divides and redivides so while one cell is dividing into two cells these two cells accidentally separate and they are implanted separately okay so when uh, the two embryos two zygotes are coming from the same cell it is known as identical it it results in the formation of identical twins and they are known as monozygotic twins okay but sometimes what happens is uh eggs that are coming out from both the ovaries usually every month only one ovary produces eggs but sometimes accidentally both the ovaries they produce eggs in the same month and fertilization takes place both the eggs get fertilized and get implanted uh in the uterus okay uh, simultaneously this is how the dizygotic twins are produced that are 
non identical twins okay uh, the sex of the zygotes can be same or it can be different okay so the monozygotic twins will share the same placenta but uh, the dizygotic twins they will have two placentas like there will be two umbilical cords uh, in case of dizygotic twins and there will be only single umbilical cord in case of a monozygotic twins if you are confused about umbilical cord umbilical cord it is uh, it comes out from the uh, placenta of the mother and then it connects to the womb of the baby okay so this is how the twi twins are produced let's move on to the next question so visit a poultry farm talk to the manager of the farm and try to find out the answers to the following what are layers and broilers in a poultry farm layers are the birds which are grown for uh, especially only for uh, eggs okay and broilers these are the eggs which are grown only for their meat okay so layers can lay good quality of eggs okay and uh, broilers they can give good quality of meat so this is egg laying birds okay do hens lay unfertilized eggs yes how can you obtain fertilized and unfertilized eggs fertilized eggs can be uh, produced by natural process okay naturally this can happen but unfertilized production of unfertilized egg is induced by hormones okay hormones are injected into them and then the eggs are produced are the eggs that we get in the stores fertilized or unfertilized so the answer for this is both both type of eggs are found in the stores can you consume fertilized egg yes is there any difference in the nutritional value of fertilized and unfertilized egg yes there is fertilized eggs are basically more nutritious okay than the fertilized uh, sorry then the unfertilized eggs unfertilized eggs are also nutritious okay but if you compare the nutrition value fertilized eggs will be more nutritious let's move on to the next question internal fertilization takes place inside the male body inside female body outside female body or outside male body the correct answer is inside the female body this we have already discussed it is the fertilization that takes place inside the body of the mother okay next question is sets of reproductive terms are given below choose the set that has an incorrect combination okay so first is sperm testes sperm duct penis uh, b menstruation egg oviduct uterus okay c sperm oviduct egg and uterus then d ovulation egg oviduct uterus the correct answer is c where is sperm it reaches the oviduct where it meets the egg fertilization takes place and finally the fertilized egg is implanted into the uterus okay out of all the options only uh, c option c makes sense okay then which is not a viviparous animal the viviparous animal are those which give birth to young ones human beings do cows do dogs do but butterfly does not so the correct answer is butterfly okay so guys we have finished the topic uh with this question and uh, we have finished the video also i hope you liked it and more than that i hope you understood it uh i would love to answer your questions if you have any uh, you can post them on the forum and stay tuned for my next video on next topic thank you uh -huh.